This is a real honor for me as an individual who's been in government for a long time and to have the opportunity uh, to introduce you, our next police commissioner. Uh, a very wise newsman once told me that uh, probably the most important position in our city government besides mayor is police commissioner. Everything, so many things hinge on, on the job that he or she does and the, and the job of our police department interacting with our communities uh, is really probably one of the most important things we do as a government. Uh, and uh, this has been kind of a badly kept secret uh, during the course of this whole transition that we've been going through, but we really wanted to respect the process, wait till after the general election, obviously, uh, and to make sure that uh, we had everything in order. I want to thank our transition, public safety transition team uh, and the, the uh, police foundation here for their support and ongoing and hopefully continued support in our efforts. Uh, and um, it is just my total and complete honor uh, to introduce a person who is not only a stellar law enforcement professional, but a stellar person, a stellar individual, and a stellar Philadelphian. And I'm very, very proud to introduce our next police commissioner, Richard Ross. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor-elect. Uh, can't thank him enough. Uh, he and I have worked together for a number of years while he was on council, developed a really good relationship and I think what I love about this whole thing is that I think it's safe to say we're just two regular guys, you know, and that's, that's who we are. We're not ashamed to acknowledge that from far ends of the city, but think very much alike. Just come from humble beings and beginnings and uh, just very happy about the opportunity to work alongside him and his team in this city. I know we're two people that just love this city, and so that's, that's a great thing. Excited about the opportunities that are, are before us. Uh, would not be here without a lot of help. Did not get here on my own. Obviously, he had to select me, but along the way, the men and women in the police department, and I'm talking about both sworn and civilian, who work very hard for all the people that work and live here. I mean, they deserve all the kudos that they get and some that they don't, uh, as well as the, the community, all the folks who are here today, and the, even the FOP, you know, we might not always agree, but we, we will sit down and hammer things out, and I'm optimistic we'll do that in the future. I'd be remiss if, if I didn't acknowledge my boss, uh, Commissioner Charles Ramsey, who is arguably the biggest name in the business right now. Uh, he's been a friend and a mentor to me, and he's done some heavy lifting uh, for this department and this city. We are grateful to have had him in his service and um, thankful to have served under him for the last eight years. So I can't say enough about him and what he's done for me in my career. And, and I think it's important to underscore the fact that this is more about passing the baton. This is things that we've done successfully, we've had a modicum of success with, and it's not about reinventing the wheel, it's just about building upon it and making this city a better and safer place. So I'm thankful to be here today. I'm very grateful for the opportunity, and I think it's my turn to introduce President John McNesby. Thank you. Um, first of all, congratulations, and thank you to Mayor Kenny for, for giving uh, Ross, uh, Commissioner Ross, a, a, shot at the, a shot at the title, so to say. But um, we have a great relationship working now with the Philadelphia Police Department, and we look forward to continuing that uh, over the next four years, hopefully eight years. Uh, we've done a lot of good things behind the scenes between the police department and the FOP and the officers on the street because when you look at the common denominator, that's who we're all here for, and that's the officers on the street who are in turn there for the community. So um, Rich is gonna step up to the, to the front seat and it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a great working relationship and we're gonna do a lot of good. So Rich, congratulations. And it's my pleasure now to introduce the head of the NAACP, Muhammad Rao. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we just want to say that uh, we're happy about this appointment from the NAACP and the community at large. Uh, we have uh, known um, Officer Ross for a number of years, and we've seen him work. Uh, uh, he's level-headed, um, and with the issue of public safety, uh, it's important that our mayor-elect uh, staff uh, a good public safety team around the city. If we're going to make a world-class city, it has to be a world-class police force uh, and citizenship and a world-class relationship with the police and the community. And so um, we at the NAACP, we're in full support of this. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. 
so I guess you have no questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This officially will start when? Five o'clock on the 7th of January? Um, I, I, we get sworn in January 4th, so I suspect it's January 4th. Okay, but the commissioner said that he wouldn't retire effective January 7th. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll work it out. <laughs> Can I ask a question to Commissioner sure. Well, I think you, you have to realize that we have to make stops based on reasonable suspicion. I mean, that is the law. And, and we obviously cannot arbitrarily stop people for no reason. But I think a lot of the discussions going forward will, will take place with the uh, transition team, and, and we'll sit down and we'll hammer out a lot of things along with them and the FOP. But reasonable suspicion is, is the phrase that we use, and, and that's what we'll be working on. There. Is that not what you guys have done with the program? It is. It is. It's the law. It's United States uh, law. So Well, I think the only thing that would be different is to the messaging and, and making sure that we, we train to that effect. We, our officers are, are trained every year on legal updates and that we constantly hammer home what the, what the law is and that we continue to message out properly what, what we will and will not tolerate. But, you know, making it clear that we support our police officers and our community and uh, we'll do it so constitutionally and under the guise of the law. Well, I'll tell you that we're going to do everything possible to continue with the success we've had with uh, driving down crime. And uh, so we're optimistic we'll continue to do that. I obviously can't speak for every person in rank and file, but I think we have a bunch of professional men and women. They understand what their charge is, and they'll do what's right And uh, because they are in the business of protecting the city and the people in it. Commissioner Ross, what would be your difference in leadership than the current police commission? Where, where are people getting with Rich Ross to come well, I mean, part of it is just being inclusive like the mayor-elect is uh, the type of person he is. I, I agree with that. You have to have everybody at the table. That's important. I mean, and, and I think it's important to emphasize I'm also talking about police officers as well, getting their feedback, that of the community. Can't say enough about the business community that's here today and the foundation and what they do. You have to be inclusive. You have to get everybody's input. It's not just rhetoric. I mean, I believe that. Anybody who talks about my career will tell you that, you know, I believe in that and have demonstrated that. If you don't do that, you're going to miss it. And I think that's one of the key things you'll see. But one of the things that my boss just said to me about 20 minutes ago, and, you know, I was thanking him for his leadership and what he's done, is he just said, you know, make sure you do the same thing. And what I mean by that is mentoring other people, their careers, because that will only serve the department well in the long run, because then you'll have future leaders who are ready to take over. And we got plenty who are qualified and ready. Commissioner, uh, what about the issue of body cameras? That's something else that the mayor-elect has talked about. I know there's already a pilot program uh, in place. Will that expand under your watch? Absolutely. In fact, uh, there's already uh, some measures underway to continue in the 22nd district where the pilot is. And presently, we have plans to continue that throughout that district and some subsequent plans, subsequent plans to move that throughout the rest of the city. We're optimistic that, you know, we'll be able to do that with the funding that will be available, but we, we are all behind that. The officers who wear them are excited about it. They, they think a lot of good things come from that to include reducing the, the temperature in certain encounters. So we're, we're going to continue doing that. Well, right now, I mean, that's part of discussions we'll have. I mean, that, that's a political thing. We, John and I and the mayor-elect will invariably talk about that. But that's another matter for the trans, uh, transition team. We'll deal with that as we go forward. we still got some time. But uh, I'm not ready to weigh in on that just as of yet. Right. And there are a lot of people who do. 
and so I think it's important to emphasize that as well. I mean, sometimes we hear from folks who, you know, have legitimate concerns, and that's real. But there are a lot of folks who you don't hear them talk about how much they appreciate the police and know about the, how difficult the job is that they do. And so we'll work very hard to continue to improve those relationships first and foremost. You got to do that. You, you got to have people feel that you're going to be in it for them. As far as the safety piece, I mean, look, numbers are numbers, but people do have to feel safe, and I think that's what you're driving at. And, and that's equally as important as a number, and whether that number correlates to a reduction or not. So we're gonna work very hard to do both, but you gotta roll up your sleeves, and you gotta be able to get out there and demonstrate to people that you're gonna be responsive to them. And if you don't do that, then all you're doing is spinning your wheels. And I can follow up on that. The under Mayor Nutter, we had 400 murders a year. Uh, the numbers have gone down to about 200 to 250. But if you're one of those families, 250 is still 250 people too many. How do you reduce the number of folks getting murdered in this town, considering that most of the people who are killing each other are folks of the same, blacks are killing blacks. How do you reduce that number in a city that's 40, 50% uh, Complex question. I, and first, uh, it, uh, Mayor Nutter did not have 400. I think he came in less than that, even from the beginning. But I, I think what's important is the partnerships that we, we talked about. If you don't develop those partnerships with community, that's why it's good to have Minister Rodney Muhammad here, as well as everyone else we spoke about, you're, you're not going to do it. Um, there's a whole lot of issues involved in that. We, we've been or had a modicum of success and reducing crime, and you're right, if it's one murder, it is too many, and people have talked about that. But I think what's important, equally important, is those relationships and understanding that you have other issues that correlate to this issue across the country. You, you have poverty, you have education, you know, anybody who believes that the police department by itself in any jurisdiction is going to do it alone is simply crazy. It's just not going to happen. We, we, we are very optimistic about what we can do, and we will continue to work very hard. Getting more police officers is going to be one key to that. So if you can help us with our recruitment, that'd be nice. But uh, that's just one of many things, right? All right, cause, so the short answer is I really don't know. I mean, you get a lot of uh, conversation about the new criteria. We don't have any facts to support that. Uh, some about the Ferguson effect, if that's even real. Uh, the, the short answer is we, we are looking into that, but it is not just a Philadelphia problem, as you know. And jurisdictions across this nation are struggling with this, and, and this is why I, I'm never bashful about broaching that topic, because I'm not here today, you know, even though it's somewhat shameless. But, you know, if we can get people to speak up this organization, uh, it would be great because it is a noble profession, one that I'm very proud of and, and the men and women that serve uh, in this uh, department. Well, I mean, look, you, you, you continue to monitor those things. You, you drive home the importance of integrity. You work very closely with uh, the FOP and community. To John McNesby's credit, and he doesn't get enough of it, he does not support that. And he's come out vehemently against corrupt cops, and, and I think people overlook that. And he's demonstrated that by his unwillingness to uh, support, you know, in terms of legal representation, those officers who are accused of those things. So, I mean, I think it, it requires a partnership. There's no easy fix to that, but you, you, you have to work in collaboration with a lot of people to uncover that. You have to make it clear to the police officers who serve in the ranks, you know, that it is okay to su support that, I mean, to support reporting those issues, and, and it's okay to root it out because you don't want that in your ranks. You're going to see a lot of what you've already seen and then some. So foot patrols is a staple of ours. It is no question about that. We were successful in bringing that to the city where everyone knows by now that every new police officer walks a footbeat. And there's so many things that stem from that that are good. Developing relationships where you would not have otherwise done so because you're, you're walking as opposed to being in a car. You get to see 
the regular folks that, that are about what you're about, just wanting to have a good quality of life for their families without racing from 911 call to 911 call. But just on a routine basis, just working with people, being responsive, letting them know that they can touch you, that they can reach out to you, express your concerns, but wanting to have meaningful relationships. Not, you know, you want to hear from people, you want to hear their complaints, their concerns, but you also want to know that you can meet with people in, in a more structured way where people are willing to roll up their sleeves, show that they're committed to improving the quality of life in this city. And people all across the city want this. I don't care what neighborhood you're talking about. Everybody wants the same thing. All this stuff about people in certain neighborhoods don't care. That's a bunch of you know what. And so I, don't, I never bought into that. I don't accept people who do. You know, we are committed to improving the quality of life in this city. You have a team that I believe is going to be inclusive, as the mayor-elect has already indicated. And so a lot of things you've seen, again, passing the baton. And I can't stress that enough. I mean, you know, we've had a great commissioner. And, and so I don't feel the need to act like we're going to start from ground zero, because we're not. We are going to build on it. Commissioner Ramsey is his own man, and he's a great one. But he doesn't expect me to be him. You know, he doesn't want that, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not going to be. I, I am my own man. And so we will do the best we can. We will get uh, feedback from not only the communities, but the police officers. You heard me say that before. I mean, they're on the ground. We want to hear what they have to say. We want to hear what our civilians have to say. All these people are stakeholders, and we're going to use them. How will you be different from uh, Well, I mean, I, I, I hate to run with that question, Vern, because it's, it's kind of tough for me because that's my mentor. You know, so I'll just say that I will build on what he's done. And, and like he said to me before, you know, you want to take something and just uh, make it a little better than the way you found it. And, and I think he'd be happy to hear that. Let's think over here. She didn't get a chance to ask. Crime will never be finished. I mean, that, that's, that's the biggest one, and you can never underestimate, you know, relationships with all communities. I mean, people talk about relationships with uh, communities of color, but I'm talking about all communities. We, we, we're tasked with protecting everyone and developing relationships with everyone. And so, you know, we won't overlook that. We won't overlook any neighborhood or any uh, group. And so we're going to be out there for folks, and that's the bottom line.